Hi guys, my name is Walter Can III. I am a flight instructor at Thrust Flight. I've been here for about seven months. And today we're gonna to talk about five emergencies that every pilot should be prepared for. The first and most common emergency is definitely engine failure. Now this isn't surprising because this is the most common practiced emergency procedure. So with an engine failure, it depends on how severe the situation is based off of our altitude. Altitude is life. So it depends on if we lost our engine at right after takeoff, or did we lose our engine while cruising at 5,000 feet? Well, I have much more significant options at 5,000 feet than I do at maybe 1,000 feet. I can take my time at 5,000. I can't really take my time at 1,000, right? So with engine failure procedures, again, assuming that we're in a non-critical phase of flight and we have an engine failure, the procedure for this is to, one, pitch for your airspeed or what we call best glide. When we pitch for our best glide, we're gonna choose our best field to land on. Now, think about this for a second. Best field. That does not mean just an open field of grass. The best field should always be an airport. Always, <laughs> okay? A suitable airport to land at. If we can't land at a suitable airport, then we should be able to choose an open field or even a road. The third step is we're gonna run through our checklist, our restart procedures. Now remember, we're at 5,000 feet and we've just pitched our best glide and we've chosen our field. So we have plenty of time to decipher the situation. Pull out that checklist and run through the engine restarting procedures to see if we can get the engine restarted. If we can get the engine restarted, all the more better, we can find a nearest suitable place to land, right? Now, let's say we can't get our engine started. Then we go to the fourth step, which is we declare an emergency on 121.5 and squawk 7700. That 7700 is a very important squawk code because that designates that we are an, are an emergency aircraft. And when we squawk that, ATC sees that and says, there is an aircraft that needs assistance. I need to get over there and I need to help him. So when we declare an emergency on 121.5, which is called on guard frequency, we will say mayday, 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 Cessna thrust, whatever call sign we have, and we're gonna tell them our location and what we want. Now, keep in mind, we can land anywhere we need to, okay, to make sure that we operate safely. All the rules and regulations pretty much have gone out the window at this point because once again, we're in an emergency scenario. So you can call even for EMS to meet you at the airport if need be. So there's various services that you have available to you in order to ensure the best possible outcome of the scenario. Now, after engine failure, another emergency that is not as common, but could happen to you as a pilot, is an engine fire. Engine fire, this needs to be committed to memory because this is time critical. With an engine fire, the first thing you're gonna want to do is cut the source of the fire. Now, once we've done that, it turns into A, B, C, D again, right? Airspeed, best place to land, checklist, and declare an emergency. So you see how all of this ties into one another, right? We just had an engine fire, a very traumatic experience. And now we've taken that and now converted it into an engine failure. The third emergency that we need to be aware of is an electrical fire. This is also time critical and also needs to be committed to memory. Now, a lot of these things are very basic because Engine fire, you shut off the source of the fire. Electrical fire, you do the same thing. You shut the source of the fire out. So first step is to shut off your electrical equipment. So we do that by shutting off our master battery and our alternator. We shut off our alternator master battery and then we pull out the fire extinguisher and we extinguish the fire. That's why the passenger reefing is so important. You need to understand how to operate the fire extinguisher. And then we start an emergency descent and find the nearest suitable place to land. What you're gonna find is, when you shut off your electrical equipment, you gotta understand your aircraft systems. When you shut off your electrical equipment, you might have lost your flaps if they are electrically actuated. You also have more than likely lost your comms, you don't have autopilot, and 
In some cases, your landing gear is electrically driven, so you won't be able to lower your landing gear. These are all things that need to be addressed prior to shutting your electrical system off. So there needs to be an understanding of your systems in order to understand what you have lost and what you can and can't do in that specific type of airplane. The fourth emergency that we need to be prepared for, a medical emergency. Your passengers are your most valuable asset in this case. In fact, we are pilots, one, because we love flying, but also because we have a lot of responsibility and we like having people who trust us. So as a passenger, one thing that you wanna see in a pilot is someone who acts with a sense of urgency to get an aircraft on the ground to save a life. Remember, somebody is counting on you to get them to a destination as quickly and safely as possible. This is not a light task at hand. So really what you need to do is declare an emergency and go and land at the nearest, again, suitable airport, primarily one that has already EMS. If you land an airport without EMS, you need to communicate on the guard frequency that you need emergency services as soon as possible. The fifth emergency that we're gonna cover today is called an emergency descent. And you're saying, well, Trey, didn't we already go over emergency descents? Well, yes, we did with an engine fire, but how do we conduct this emergency descent? How we conduct this emergency descent is, my preference is I like to bank and descend at the same time. Remember, in a bank, we lower our vertical component of lift. When we lower our vertical component of lift, we're gonna be descending at a faster rate. In commercial, this maneuver is called a steep spiral. That's the whole reason we do steep spirals. A steep spiral is an emergency descent. So when we are spiraling down, we're trying to get to our lowest altitude in the minimum amount of time. Have you noticed a key feature here? Time is critical. So when you start that emergency descent, I like to go ahead and bank and start that emergency descent. All right, guys, that covers our video today over five emergencies that every pilot should be able to deal with. Comment down below if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos.